It's time for another UNC basketball recruiting podcast here on TarHillIllustrated.com. And if you're watching us on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, our THI publisher, Andrew Jones, and joining me is our director of basketball recruiting, Clint Jackson. And if you've been paying attention for the last couple of weeks, we've been rolling through what we're calling the Class of 2021 Snapshot Series, where one day Clint unveils a written piece on someone either Carolina has uh, offered a scholarship to or we believe is a heavy target of the Tar Heels for the class of 21. The next day we roll out a podcast discussing that player. And a lot of the stuff in the podcast isn't exactly in the written piece. So you kind of need both parts to get the full story. So Clint, today we're doing DeMarco Dunn, who recently popped up on the radar when he was offered by the Tar Heels about a month ago, a local kid from Fayetteville, but he's only been in Fayetteville for less than a year, I guess at this point, or around a year. So what can you tell people about DeMarco Dunn? He's a very, very new name on the radar for a lot of people. Yeah, well, the first thing I want to disclaim is that I have not seen this kid personally yet. Actually, there's a lot of people who have not seen this kid personally. Uh, you know, he is a guy who is from Tucson, Arizona. In fact, when I called him on the phone, his, his number came up as Tucson. Uh, I have been talking to a lot of people over the past week, trying to get some intel, get some pulse, learn a little bit about uh, what he plays like get some player comparisons, and just get up to date. So first thing, I want to disclaim, I have not seen him, but I do feel pretty good about the information I have today. What is some of that information? First of all, what kind of player is he? Well, from what I gather, he's a six foot four, 180-pound shooter, but also a slasher and scorer. So he's going to be a guy that's going to slot as a two-guard. Um, with Based on his size, based on his skill set, he's not going to be a combo guard. He's not going to be a wing forward. He's going to be a straight-up two. Um, kind of cut from that Wayne Ellington cloth, if you will. Um, you know, guy who uh, can shoot it on the move, can shoot it with the catch, can get to the basket. He's athletic. Uh, he's very coachable, good team player, very efficient player from everyone I've talked to. And he's one of those guys that probably would have blown up had we had an AAU circuit. A lot of college coaches are spending time watching this tape, and he's up to almost about 20 offers, and a lot of these schools have not even seen him live. And a lot of those offers have come in about the last six weeks or so. I know that some of the national stuff that uh, our, the group here at Rivals has done lately, it seems like every other time they roll out a, a vibe piece about guys that may blow up soon, his name always comes up. Six weeks ago, a lot of us had never heard of him. What are some of the other schools that have offered that have kind of uh, engineered this, this, this growth and in, in, in his reputation? And what do you hear from other people that cover other programs that have offered, if you talk to a lot of them, if they're hearing the same kind of interest for the same reasons in this case? Yeah, uh, one, I, I think you and I have kind of shared over text message who I've been talking to in regards to him. You know, I spoke to one of his AU coaches today. I spoke to his high school coach earlier today. I've spoken to a college coach who kind of thought he was getting in early with him and thought he would have a chance. And now he feels that the recruitment has blown up and he may have to start looking for other targets. So one of the things I've done is I've compiled this note list of all this stuff that I've learned about him for the past week or so. And you know me, uh, when we uh, do podcasts, sometimes I'll, I'll buy a little bit of time and I'll say I have to prep because I want to remember and be able to recite this stuff, especially when you're getting it from so many different people. So to look at my list, some of the offers he has received, Xavier, Marquette, Louisville, Clemson, North Carolina, Arizona, Vanderbilt, VCU, Wake Forest, South Florida, Houston, Wichita State, East Carolina, Texas, Maryland. So he's got schools all over the map. He's got high majors. He's got mid majors. He's got guys that play fast. He's got systematic teams. This kid's a national target. And I have a feeling if we had seen him play, this is the type of kid who's going to be a top 40 sort of recruit based on who's recruiting him. So he's really good. I wouldn't pay attention to his ranking. Um, we need to get out and see some basketball. Hopefully that'll start up in July. I would really like to get out on the road and see some of these kids. But this is a kid who's blowing up. And he's blowing up in the middle of a pandemic. And, and a lot of times people think that schools offer because, oh, this school offered, so we better go ahead and offer. But Arizona has probably seen this kid. They, have, they, they, they know his game maybe a lot better than everybody else because he was there before he came to North Carolina. I don't know how much he was on other people's radars – uh, in the East this past season, but they did offer a couple days after UNC did. When 
when they eventually did offer, did that tell you a little bit more about the the, the, uh, the direction this recruitment might go? It may end up being a battle between programs like Arizona, Carolina, et cetera. I mean, it did. I mean, you look at the kids' high major offers, and he's just got a ton, a ton of them. I mean, not that many blue bloods outside of you know maybe Carolina, if you want to call Arizona a blue blood, I guess. But uh, you know, Maryland, Texas, all these, all these big schools are after him. I think he was one of those guys that a lot of college coaches were happy that his name was not out there. And now that it is out there, if they were interested, it kind of forces their hand to offer if they want to get involved. So you know, just looking at these 15, 17 offers that he's got, a lot of big time schools out there. Is it too early to have a, <clears throat> a feel for where things stand with him right now? Or, or what do you hear from some of the people that are close to him that might be some of the important factors for him as he sorts through this parade of, the, of offers that are coming in? Yeah, good question. I did dig a little bit. Uh, one of the people I talked to didn't really give me too much information, but the other one kind of shared, you know, some stuff with me off the record. So I can't say who told me this, but I think some of the players, I think UNC is going to be a big player. I think Vanderbilt with uh, Coach Jerry Stackhouse will be a player. Uh, Louisville, Marquette, Xavier, those are some of the schools that were mentioned to me as they're doing a really good job recruiting him. But uh, what I gathered from talking to Coach uh, George Stackhouse, who is Jerry's uh, cousin, by the way, uh, and coaching at Westover in Fayetteville, is that he's very open and very respectful and wants to hear everybody's message. So he's not one of those kids who kind of already has his mind made up where he wants to go. He's got some schools that have intrigued him, but he's open and listening to the messages. And I think some of the things that are going to be important to him are proven coaches, uh, people with NBA experience, people that have sent players to the NBA, people that know what it takes in the NBA, because I think that's this kid's goal. I'm not going to ask you the question about what's one thing about him that jumps out to you that might surprise people because you haven't seen him yet. When you do eventually have an opportunity to see him, which may be in the next few months, we will then have another one of these uh, discussions, and I will ask you that question then. I'm looking forward to what your answer will be at the time. Me too. It's always one of my favorite things is to sit there and watch these kids and, and, and watch them off the ball and watch them off the court and watch some of the things that they do. Um, I will tell you that one of the things that uh, both of the folks that I talked to today and the one I talked to last week said about him is he's known as a shooter, but he's a very good athlete. So I have a feeling that I could walk away thinking, okay, this kid's not just a shooter. He's, he's a guy who can do it off the dribble too. So uh, one of the player comparisons that George Stackhouse used for him was a, a smaller Ray Allen. Hmm. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Ray Allen, Ray Allen, Wayne Ellington combos, I think would intrigue a lot of Carolina fans. Remember, for just $8.33 a month, you can become a premium member of TarHillIllustrated.com and get everything that Clint does, because a lot of it is premium access stuff. If you just watch the video, you understand why. So make sure you go to our site, check it out, and also – Football recruiting and certain things about UNC football and basketball also are under that premium uh, umbrella, as well as the message boards, which are always rocking. Clint, thanks, my man. Appreciate you guys uh, listening, and uh, please consider subscribing. For Clint Jackson, this is Andrew Jones. You've been watching another UNC basketball recruiting podcast right here on the one and the only TarHillIllustrated.com. Thanks for stopping by.